Good evening. It's good to see you this evening, and I wish everybody a uh, happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, I don't have any announcements regarding the service itself, so let's begin with our opening hymn, number 892. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we approach our Lord, let us confess how thankless we can be for all the blessings he gives us. Father, you provide us with so many wonderful things, and we cannot even be bothered to thank you properly. Forgive us, and help us to remember to thank you, not only during this holiday, but every day of the year, grant us strength to give to others as you have given to us. One of the greatest things to be thankful for is God's forgiveness. He has made all things new in Christ Jesus, opening the doors to the eternal banquet hall, inviting sinners to dine with him as the gracious host and guest. 
Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you who give all good gifts, grant us hearts that are truly thankful for all that you have given us, especially for the forgiveness won for us in the cross of Calvary, that we might praise you in all that we do, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8. The, the whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to, his, to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that, as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading comes from Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Now that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once, again, once and again. Now that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And 
As they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, We're not ten cleansed. Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now that we have heard God's word, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, number 894, For the Fruits of His Creation. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, dear Lord. Amen. Our text for this Thanksgiving Eve is our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 17, as it was read earlier. We're all familiar with the story of the ten lepers. We hear it every Thanksgiving. Uh, we, we heard it a couple of months ago 
in our regular Sunday readings as well. And usually when we talk about the ten lepers, what we talk about is the one leper that comes back to, to give thanks and the other nine that didn't and, and talk about the importance then of giving thanks and all of that. But uh, this, this, this evening, I'd like to, to change it up a little bit and talk about the lepers in a slightly different light, if we could. Okay? Uh, the lepers in our gospel lesson for today, they were going through, of course, we all know, a very rough time in their lives, weren't they? Um, lepers back then were ostracized, okay? They were not allowed in town. They had to live outside of town uh, in a, an old a special a little area uh, for them. I think that's kind of where we get uh, the idea of uh, leper colonies from. Uh, but they had to live out there. They couldn't come into town. They couldn't associate with people. They couldn't come near people. Uh, they even shouted at Jesus from a distance uh, in, in our gospel lesson for today. Um, if a traveler were to come near them, they were supposed to shout out leprosy, leprosy as loud as they can so that that traveler would know to avoid them and stay away from them. And so here these people were, in, they were sick, they were in pain, and they were shunned, weren't they? Uh, they were, they were kind of treated, or they were definitely treated as second-class citizens, shunned. Nobody wanted anything to do with them. They were going through an extremely rough Time. Their re leprosy, though, did not mean that they didn't have anything to be thankful for. They actually probably did. It was probably hard for them to see it, um, but they probably did have things to be thankful for. If you think about it for a little bit, um, they were at least still alive, weren't they? That's something to be thankful for. They were miserable, of course, but, but they still had their lives at least, okay? Um, they, they, of course, were out of town and, and, and alone and, and didn't have anything to do and all of that stuff. And of course, they didn't have TVs or radios or computers or phones or anything to keep them entertained during that time. But that also would have given them an opportunity to reflect and to examine their lives, to examine their priorities and, and to think about those types of things. They weren't necessarily alone either. Uh, there were 10 lepers together that were there able to, uh, to give each other mutual support and care during their difficulties. And so even though their lives were horrible <laughs> and terrible and miserable and pain-filled, there were still at least a few things that they could be thankful for. And one thing that I think we, we kind of forget about is that they actually could be thankful for their leprosy as well. Because it was their leprosy that brought Jesus into their lives. And he, of course, healed them and saved them. There are a lot of people in the world right now that are going through rough times in their lives, aren't they? If we're honest with ourselves, all of us have gone through rough times at different points in our lives as well, haven't we? Some people have been affected horribly by COVID-19 or another disease or another health problem. Many people have lost loved ones recently. A lot of people have a lot of anger and stress and frustration uh, with the government, with politicians, with, with our culture and everything going on in the world. Uh, there's people who, who are financially struggling. You know, the economy hasn't been the greatest, and some experts are even predicting that we're heading towards a recession. It, it seems like we can't even get through a weekend without hearing about another shooting, either in Chicago or somewhere else. Businesses are closing either because they can't get enough customers or because they can't get enough supplies or because they can't get enough workers. For many people in the world today, life is rough. It is difficult in one way or another. And yet, this is also a time to be thankful. In the midst of our struggles and difficulties, we can still be thankful, can't we? Sometimes when things are at their darkest, you can more easily see the things you have to be thankful for. Family, friends, job, home, shelter, and many, many others. We are a lot like the lepers in our lesson for today. 
we can be thankful in the midst of the struggles in our lives. We can slow down a little and examine our priorities. We can take time at home with our families. We can remember how important good health can be. But most important of all, just like the lepers, we can be thankful that we get to encounter Jesus. For a lot of people online, for a few of us here in person, Current statistics suggest that a lot more people are actually hearing God's word today than 10 years ago, which is kind of weird because I just read an article that said that in-person church attendance across the United States has gone down 45% in the last few years. That's around 27 million people less in church uh, since the pandemic first hit. And almost every LCMS Church, whose pastors that I've talked to, and, and they're a church that, uh, that either records their service and puts it online or live streams their service. Every, almost every one of these pastors I've talked to have had a great deal more people tuning in than they ever had being in person the last 20 or so years. And so, so current statistics show that a lot more people are hearing God's word at least. Despite all of the problems in the world, we still get to encounter Jesus Christ. And isn't that a wonderful thing? For the lepers, encountering Jesus meant that they were healed. Their leprosy disappeared on their way to see the priest. All of them were healed. Even though only one of them came back and thanked Jesus, they were all still healed of their leprosy. The one who came back then had got an extra special blessing when Jesus says, go, your faith has made you well. That's what we get to, isn't it? When we encounter Jesus, our faith makes us well. Not necessarily from a physical problem or ailment, you know, or a financial problem or frustration with the government or with our culture or whatever it might be. And not necessarily with all of that, though that could happen as well. We can be healed from those things as well. But no, our faith heals us from something much worse, a spiritual illness that we call sin. You know, COVID can make you lose your senses of taste and smell. The flu can make you feel miserable. High blood pressure can have a negative impact on your heart. Cancer can kill you. But that's the worst that any of those things can do to you. The spiritual sickness of sin can do much, much worse. In this world, Sin, depending on what type of sin it is and how bad of a sin it is, sin can make you lose your job if you, you know, drop the ball on a project or you steal something from work or something like that. Sin can make you lose your friends if you start gossiping about them behind their backs. Sin can make you lose your family when you yell and scream at them, when you're frustrated with life or whatever it might be, and so much more that sin can do in this world. But there is something much, much worse than any of that that sin can do. Our spiritual illness can make you eternally die. Another way of saying that is sin can send a person to hell. And therefore we need and we needed to be cured. We needed to be healed of this sickness. And the only way you can be healed from it is by encountering Jesus. By hearing his word where he tells you that you are forgiven by having your, your forehead graced in the waters of holy baptism by partaking of holy communion as we're going to do in a few moments here in our church services, at home, in our personal devotions. When you encounter Jesus in those places, Jesus brings you the healing that he won for us on the cross of Calvary and in the empty tomb. You are cured completely, totally, and forever. 
Yes, it's true, you'll still have some symptoms of that spiritual sickness of sin. It's a lot like COVID. You know, COVID, you can have COVID and then supposedly, you know, be healed of it, but then have symptoms of it for many, many, many months, sometimes even a couple of years afterwards. The same is true for us. We have been cured of our spiritual sickness of sin, and yet we still have a lot of the symptoms, don't we? We still gossip or lie. We still will be tempted to take some office supplies from work. Uh, We'll put other people down. We'll yell at our family when we're frustrated. We'll gaze a little bit too long at a pretty girl or whatever it might be. You will still have the symptoms of your spiritual illness. God, of course, takes care of that every time that he forgives you. And you have been healed completely, which means that you will live forever with God in heaven, where you'll never again have to worry about anything like cancer or COVID or an untrustworthy politician or financial insecurity or even your own spiritual sickness. That is something to be truly thankful for. If this Thanksgiving you can't think of anything to thank God for, well, let me suggest a couple of things. One, you're probably not thinking hard enough (laughs) or trying hard enough to think of something to be thankful for because we all have things that we can be thankful for. But at the very, very least, even if you can't think of anything else to be thankful for, you can thank God for giving you Jesus, for the spiritual healing that he brings you through his death and resurrection, and for giving you eternal life through them. Amen. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Please rise as we bring our offering forward and sing our song of praise, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. We continue now with the collects for today. Almighty God, 
Your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you crown the fields with your blessing and permit us to gather in the fruits of the earth. As stewards of your creation, may we receive your gifts in humble thankfulness and share your bounty with those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, look with favor upon your servants whom we uh, name in our minds silently now. Assure them of your mercy. Deliver them from the temptations of the evil one and give them patience and comfort in their trials. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Heavenly Father, God of all grace, govern our hearts that we may never forget your blessings but steadfastly thank and praise you for all your goodness in this life. Until with all of your saints, we praise you eternally in your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us give thanks for all the blessings God has bestowed upon us. Our Lord has given us his own body and blood in this blessed sacrament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Please be seated. We can come forward. <laughs> this precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you of the true Christian faith to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that you have given us your Son in this meal. Help us to grow in faith toward you and in love toward one another until the day you call us to the great banquet in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and to give you his peace. Amen. Amen.